dear colleagues, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I hope you hear me well. Yes. Yesterday, we opened agenda item three on the post 2020 global biodiversity framework for completion of the first reading. Previously, you will recall that this item was considered during our informal session on 17 and 18 February. At that time, interventions were heard from 48 parties and regional groups with one additional written submission and 18 observers with 20 additional written submissions. Yesterday, we heard a further 34 interventions from parties and regional groups on this item. I would like to acknowledge that although the whole yesterday's session went smoothly, some participants experienced technical challenges with logging in as well as with this connection. The Secretariat is working hard to improve this situation. So your patience is very much appreciated. I would like to remind you that if a technical issues arise, please use the green question mark in the bottom right corner of the meeting homepage to request for technical assistance. I'll give very briefly the floor to Secretariat for an additional message on this matter. Thank you, Thank Chair. You. Thank you, Chair. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, dear participants. Just a short uh, announcement uh, in relate, on related issue. So we ask you not to save the interactive link into your browser as plenaries and contact groups are different meetings. Therefore, we ask you always to join the meeting from Substa homepage. Then from the calendar, select the session you wish to attend, followed by the type of connection you need for the session, whether it is speaker or viewer. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Secretariat. I hope with this advice, things can go smoothly. Dear colleagues, unfortunately, we were unable to complete the first reading of this item yesterday and ran out of time. Colleagues, I would like to remind you that we are on a very tight schedule and that our time together is limited. We are already significantly behind on our schedule, which could affect the schedule of our entire meeting. As it is, we will not have sufficient time to embark as planned on the first reading of item eight of the agenda, the program of work of the Intergovernmental Science Policy Platform on Biodiversity and Ecosystem Services, IDBES. Then we may have to reschedule consideration of this agenda item for our next block of plenaries from the 23rd to 26th of May. Also, after consultation with Substance Bureau members yesterday, on agenda item three situation, we agree to proceed as follows. We will begin today by hearing the interventions from the five parties on our list from yesterday. We will then proceed to non-parties and major stakeholder groups, the latter being IPLCs, women's organizations, youth, CBD alliance, 
on behalf of NGOs and subnational governments, and a joint statement on behalf of World Free Foundation, Center for Biological Diversity, David Shepherd Wildlife Foundation, Defenders of Wildlife, Environmental Investigation Agency, Foundation Franz Weber, International Fund for Animal Welfare, Pro Wildlife Natural Resources Defense Council, the Wildlife Conservation Society, and the World Federation for Animals. Unfortunately, time does not allow us to open the floor to other observers. When we last check, we had received written statements from the following other observers. United Nations Environment Program, UNESCO World Heritage Commission, Office of the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights, United Nations University, International Coral Reef Initiative, Mediterranean Protected Areas Network, Wildlife Conservation Society, SBCSD, GeoBond, International Fertilizer Association, Coastal Oceans Research and Development, Indian Ocean, Global Forest Coalition, International Planning Committee for Food Sovereignty, and World Business Council for Sustainable Development. All of these statements, as well as any other submitting by close of business Montreal time today, will also be posted and made available for consideration and discussions on the elements of the non-paper, CRP, and by the co-chairs of the open-ended working group. I wish to remind you that it will be limiting interventions by parties to three minutes two minutes for non-parties, and four minutes on behalf of major groups. As time for a statement is limited, a clock is provided for you on the screen to help you to manage your time. Once again, I ask to keep your interventions to the limit, to the time limit, while speaking slowly and clearly. The speakers are reminded to upload the full text of their statements, following instructions provided earlier. Please note that your key points should be read out in the room. If any speaker encounters connectivity issues that prevent them from making their statement, they should contact the secretariat to make alternative arrangements. When we adjourned yesterday, we have the following parties on the list of speakers. Ethiopia, Denmark, Peru, Senegal, and Cambodia. Once the list of parties is exhausted, I will call on major groups to speak. I will call on the parties in the queue individually, so please raise your hand only when I call your name. I will take the first intervention from Ethiopia. Ethiopia, please raise your hand and you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. We support a statement made by South Africa on behalf of Africa. Ethiopia would like to thank the Secretariat and others who have contributed to the preparation of the meeting documents as well as organizing of the virtual meeting. We believe that during this session, the monitoring framework will be enriched, benefiting from some practical inputs by the parties, which will enable the Secretariat to update it before the open-ended working group three. Ethiopia welcomes the suggested means of monitoring framework for post-2020 Global Biodiversity Framework, which consists of sets of headline indicators and a list of component and complementary indicators. However, 
Ethiopia suggests the following issue to be considered. First, the monitoring framework indicators in the event targets should be well refined in a way that they can be implemented practically by all parties. Ethiopia also believes that sets of headline indicators have to be incorporated as a required component in the uh, national report of reports of the parties. Second, we believe the post-2020 GPF has to be structured in a balanced manner in addressing the three objectives of the CBD. Finally, we recommend that emphasis should be given to capacity building issues, including the pertains to reversing ecosystem degradation. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Ethiopia, and for being very brief and concise. Now we give the floor to Denmark, followed by Peru. Thank you, Chair. Denmark supports the statements and written comments by Sweden, Portugal, Finland and the EU. And in addition to our statements at the informal meetings, I would like to bring forward three points. Firstly, Denmark has joined the High Ambition Coalition for Nature and People because protecting 30% of global land and oceans will be central for a successful post-2020 GBF. We believe the headline indicators for Target 2 should reflect progress on achieving the target both in terms of quantity of at least 30% and the quality of that protection. Furthermore, the implementation should fully respect the United Nations declarations on the rights of indigenous peoples, the UNDRIP. Measurable quality indicators are essential to ensure that areas protected by OECMs and protected areas and marine protected areas are effectively protected. Secondly, to support monitoring of marine biodiversity, Denmark proposes to include the indicators in the UNEP report, Regional Seas Biodiversity under the post-2020 Global Biodiversity Framework in the framework. Finally, on revised at two, Denmark believes the sustainable use by productive sectors should be more clearly reflected in the post-2020 GBF, specifically with a clear focus on key productive sectors driving biodiversity laws, including infrastructure, forestry, and fisheries, which are currently not mentioned in the draft targets. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Denmark. Now we'll give the floor to Peru, followed by Senegal. Adelante, Peru. Please go ahead, Peru. Can you hear me, Chairman? Yes, we can hear you. Please go ahead. Thank you. Good morning. Peru recognizes the valuable work of the Secretary General in developing this document. Peru has one of the most productive marine systems in the world which has a great abundance of unique species. And we have the biggest mono fishing in the world and our sustainable approach is recognized throughout the world. Amongst the progress that we've made, Peru has been giving technical assistance for integrated coastal zone management. Out of the 3000 kilometers of our coastline, 30% is covered by plans for integrated coastal zone management. And this contributes to recuperate and conserving the marine ecosystems and the management of fishery resources and management of solid waste and reduction and use of uh, plastic. And a, a sustainable approach amongst the other activities that are good for the environment and local communities. At the same time, I'd like to mention that Peru has been working on pilot projects for marine spatial planning and for estimating the health of the oceans in the north of the country. This means that we can adopt sustainable management measures for the uh, coastal ecosystems in the north of Peru. We are also setting up the first 
Natural Protected Area for Marine Systems, which is the uh, National Dorsal Nazca System, which will cover the marine protected area of over 60,000 kilometers square kilometers. And we would like to recognize the value of EBSAs, their identification and description is a technical and scientific exercise. This will be a basis for activities to conserve and ensure sustainable use of biodiversity in these zones. Notwithstanding this, because of the special characteristics of our marine eco system which sustains uh, productive activities and is the main source of income for coastal communities. Peru considers that these uh, national systems need to have better analysis in line with national priorities and needs. Peru welcomes the progress that has been made in identifying options to modify the EBSAs and in order to describe new areas. At the same time, we agree with the establishment of a particular group or a, an advisory body for the description of new areas. Are the descriptions to be modified for those that are already set up? And we believe that the description of these new areas are the modifying of existing areas should be provided by the states within which the area falls respecting their sovereignty and their sovereign rights and their jurisdiction and their national interests. Chair, we will submit our contributions in writing with the matrix. Thank you very much, Peru. I'd like to point out to all participants that Peru's intervention here was on marine biodiversity that we haven't started discussing today. So please be very brief. I'm asking for your cooperation on this so that we can, first of all, round off on agenda item three on the global biodiversity framework. So we will take account of your comments. We don't need to hear it again in the next session on marine biodiversity. And in the list, which is now closed, we've got Senegal and Cambodia. But I do understand, and the Secretariat has let me know, that there are few countries that had requested to take the floor yesterday, Cameroon and China and India. So as of now, the list of the parties is closed. I'm counting on your cooperation so that we can move ahead with our agenda, which is already behind time. So I'm going to give the floor to Senegal and then Cambodia, followed by Cameroon. Senegal, please go ahead. Hello. Go ahead, Senegal, we'll hear you. Senegal, continue. In the meantime, I'll give the floor to Cambodia. Cambodia, have, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Cambodia takes note that the review of the implementation of the strategic plan for biodiversity 2011-2020 and related NBSAP, which would be one of the effective tools to ensure success of the post-2020 global biodiversity framework implementation. Therefore, the concern applicable finding of the Systematic and comprehensive studies should be considered as lesson learned and ultimately incorporated into the GBF. 
in the course of practice, there is a need to learn the failure of certain IG biology target and interpret the GAN concept into a positive chain for the development and implementation of the post 2020 GBF. Having learned that for target 18 on resource mobilizations in the new framework, a realistic and adequate percentage increase in the financial resource must be secure for the achievement of all set targets. A, a synthesis of the six national report, including the data on each archibiodiversity target should be in place and have served us a pillar of the post-2020 GBF to justify and or support the, the certain extent of each target in the new framework. The post-2020 GBF should also avail the countries a chance to continue program of work adopted in their respective NBSAPs toward 2030. The whole new framework, especially its targets, must be presented in a way to touch the mind and hearts in all layers of the society. In this regard, they need to be inspiring and specific to reach the goal. As some proposed targets are still broad and some are missing, Cambodia would like to suggest the setup of a new specific target to strongly support and promote the scientific research and technology to ensure the successful conservation of biodiversity biological resources. Cambodia suggests that it is important to also use relevant indicators which are being used by other conventions and processes, including the SDGs for du duplication, avoidance, and promotion of synergy and a common message of relevance to CBD. In addition, the post-2020 GBF should be one of the communication tools while the specific global biodiversity targets develop to strengthen sustainable development goals. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We will submit the text in writing after this session. Thank you very much, Cambodia. Let's try again with Senegal. I hope the connection is good now. Senegal, you have the floor. Senegal. If you still some problems with Senegal, let's move to Cameroon, followed by China. Cameroon, you have the floor. Meanwhile, I'll give the floor to China. China, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. With the joint efforts and cooperation of all parties, the meetings of these two subsidiary bodies of the Convention have finally been conveyed. We appreciate the spirit of cooperation shown by all parties and also would like to thank the Bureau and the Secretariat for their great efforts. We firmly believe the spirit of cooperation will ensure the substantial progress in this meeting and will also provide a solid guarantee for the success of COD15. China supports the subsidiary body in accordance with its authorization, adhering to the principles of openness, transparency, and party-driven to conduct scientific and technological reviews on the goals, targets, indicators, and the baseline, and improve it for the co-chairs of the post-2020 framework working group, provide scientific advice to ensure the goals and the targets of the post-2020 framework are both ambitious, balanced, and pragmatic. The post-2020 framework monitoring indicators are the basis for planning national actions, reporting, and reviewing global and national implementation process. Strong monitoring indicators can effectively improve the quality of national reports. They are designed 
to review the implementation process of the post-2020 framework, evaluate the effectiveness of protection and provide reliable data and information. China believes that the setting of various indicators in the monitoring framework should be scientific and reasonable, should be integrated with the framework goals and be balanced to reflect the three goals of the convention. It should also take into account the need for sustainable use of economic and society development in the post-epidemic era. And second, the monitoring framework should provide clear framework guidelines for the design of indicators. Third, the monitoring framework should be pragmatic, streamlined, and operable. It should take into account the differences in the biodiversity monitoring capabilities of contracting parties to avoid imposing excessive burdens on developing countries. And at the same time, financial funds and financial support should be provided. Yesterday, some regions and countries put forward many proposals for the monitoring indicators which provided a basis for the discussion of monitoring indicators. We recommend that the contract party refer to the suggestions and screen out the core indicators that can be operated. Mr. Chairman, the improvement of these monitoring indicators is a long-term scientific process. So it should be constantly improved so COP15, as a phased achievement of the post-2020 framework, we can form a consensus on the basic elements and methods of some operational core indicators. And experts will continue to comment on this 2020 framework after COP15. The monitoring indicators framework has been well be further improved. We will actively participate in this discussion. Thank you, Ms. Chair. Thank you, China. I remind all delegations to do your best effort to keep up the time allocated. Let's try again with Senegal, followed by Cameroon. Senegal. Bonjour, Monsieur le Président. Bonjour, chers collègues. Je m'excuse. Day chair, day colleagues. I'm sorry about the technical issues I've been having. Senegal supports. South Africa's statement on behalf of the African group and recalls that Senegal made a statement during the informal session and will not repeat what was in that statement. I will try to support uh, what was said. We support the document add to Rev 1, particularly the wording that talks about convergence of protection of 30% uh, by 2030. This was uh, call, uh, characterized as being doable. And we would like to see an in-depth in discussion in the contact group uh, of the 30% minimum by 2030 as mentioned. We are also impatient to see what the recommendations that are specific to the ways and means of dealing with conservation uh, in the OECM. We would like to concentrate on the indicators that will be in, put in place and that those indicators would allow for progress to occur on the basis of the baseline 2020. We uh, would like to concentrate on the global situation in saying that uh, we hope that uh, survival of COVID-19 will be possible for the world. Thank you. Now Cameroon followed by India, please. Let me start by extending the condolences of Cameroon to the entire IBES family for the passing away of Professor Bob. Cameroon aligns itself to the declaration made by South Africa on behalf of Africa. We would like to seize this opportunity to appreciate and thank the Secretariat for the efforts put in place in order to maintain the momentum 
as we did of COP15. Permit me, Chair, to also commend the chairs for the constant guidance in the process, not forgetting the parties, non-parties, and other stakeholders for enriching our various discussion, irrespective of the current of lockdown due to the COVID-19 pandemic. It is good to recall that we cannot continue with business as usual. Science and the IBES clearly says it is now or never that we must bring out the transformative change necessary for bending the curve on biodiversity loss and lead to a new deal for people and nature creating a nature positive world for humanity is living in harmony with nature by 2015. In this perspective, Chair, with reference to the present state of the JBF, Cameroon thinks that there is still need for targets and indicators to go beyond just describing the status of the biodiversity, but also allowing for the measurement of the progress with efforts of conservation, restoration, and sustainable use of biodiversity. However, some indicators as presented in the JBF brings to light to the necessity and importance for capacity building, technology transfer, and exchange of information for an effective implementation and monetary of the JBF. Moreover, we think that beyond the fact that some indicators might not be measurable, they did not set the stage for tracking failures in the perspective of compliance and accountability by parties. Here we are referring, for example, but not limited, to indicators B01, B02, and C01, whose monitoring will clearly necessitate enhanced capacity building, particularly for developing countries. Lastly, Chair, Cameroon disagreed loudly to the late submission of some essential working documents and denies to think to a strategized manner to avoid in-depth analysis of documents. We hope this won't in any way impact the quality of the outcome to be submitted to the co-chairs and the open-ended working group. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you very much, Cameroon. And the last speaker of parties, India, you have the floor. Microphone to India, please. Hello. Can you hear me? Am I audible? Please, go ahead. Yeah, India is currently holding the presidency of two conventions, namely Convention on Conservation of Migratory Species of Wild Animals and the United Nations Convention on for Combating Desertification, UNCCD, which are both very closely related to biodiversity conservation. India would like to state that the post-2020 global biodiversity work must have strong coherence with 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and linkages with the Paris Climate Agreement, UNCCD's uh, Land Degradation Neutrality Goal, UN Strategic Plan for Forests 2017-2030, and Ramsar uh, Strategic Plan 2016-2024. The post-2020 GPF should build on the progress made on IGE biodiversity targets by developing futuristic targets, which are smart, that is specific, measurable, ambitious, realistic, and time-bound in character. The post-2020 GBF must appropriately address all the three objectives of the convention in a balanced manner. Recognize the crucial link between biodiversity, pandemic, health, and poverty eradication, especially by addressing the most vulnerable and marginalized population, and must also recognize the link between the biodiversity and ecosystem services like clean air, water and soil. Land restoration is the best solution for biodiversity loss and therefore there is a need to restore the degraded lands. India would strongly urge to integrate the means of implementation and resource mobiliz mobilization in the global biodiversity framework which must include provision for financing biodiversity actions, scientific and techno technical cooperation and technology transfer since these have been the major obstacles so far in achieving the IG biodiversity targets. 
The Gandhi Nagar Declaration also calls for the inclusion of post-2020 global biodiversity framework of the role of various biodiversity-related conventions as well as other relevant MEAs for effective implementation, monitoring, and review of post-2020 biodiversity framework. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, India. Now, I will open the floor for interventions by representative of the major stakeholder groups. Each statement should not exceed four minutes. Please be reminded we already spent more than half an hour and our time is precious. Uh, so on behalf of indigenous peoples and local communities, Jennifer Tauli Corpus, IIFB, please raise your hand and you have the floor. Microphone to IPLC's IAFB, please. If they are not ready yet, let's proceed. On behalf of women organizations, Ana de Pangracio of FARN, F-A-R-N. Please raise your hand and you have the floor. Yes. Thank you, Chair. Good morning from Buenos Aires. I'm speaking on behalf of the CBD Women Caucus. We want to thank the Secretariat for all the documents, as well as for its efforts to facilitate our participation in these sessions. In reference to document 3 at 2 Rev 1, paragraph 143 under target 20, acknowledges the needs for a greater recognition of women including of IPLCs and youth as leaders and key actors towards biodiversity conservation and sustainable use. However, nowhere do we see any gender guidance or proposal. We have a recommendation for Section 5, Scope of the Proposed Goals and Targets, paragraph 151. It will read, gender is an important consideration across the framework and gender-specific actions should be identified for all targets. While the role of right holders in biodiversity conservation and sustainable use has been recognized and supported in several CVD COP decisions, no concrete target is proposed to recognize indigenous peoples and local communities' governance rights, including women's, despite growing scientific evidence that these are effective and necessary approaches to ensure efforts to counter biodiversity loss and are sustainable over the long term. As noted in previous discussions, sex disaggregated data is not systematically collected and therefore GBO5 as well as IPNES assessments and other scientific and technical information do not fully take into account gender. As such, it is important to ensure sex disaggregated data is addressed in all headline ed indicators that relate to people, as also suggested by UN Women and UNEP WCMC. Furthermore, Target 20 should go beyond participation to put a focus on advancing gender equality and women's empowerment. The updated zero draft also states that the implementation of the GBF will take a rights-based approach a crucial aspect that we welcome. However, we note that this approach is not well reflected in the proposed goals, targets, or indicators. In a jointly produced document, we have provided textual suggestions and indicators on how to better integrate a human rights-based approach into the post-2020 framework. We encourage parties to review this document. You can find the link in our statement posted online. In ending, we support concerns about the need to avoid regression in the post-2020 global biodiversity framework and CBD decision-making in general. We look forward to the support of parties to our recommendations in the plenaries and contact groups and hope to ensure that gender is truly mainstream within the post-2020 global biodiversity framework. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Now, on behalf of IPLC, Mia Tero, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. 
for this opportunity to address Agenda Item 3. I am speaking on behalf of the IIFB. While we appreciate all efforts to maintain momentum on the post-2020 GBF, we would like to raise grave concerns about the process. Virtual negotiations will be very difficult for IPLCs, including women and youth, because of connectivity issues, time zone challenges, and the requirement for party support for IPLC proposals to be reflected in the text. Our participation must not fall below the standards and mechanisms in international agreements and COP decisions. Given the changed, uh, changed circumstances and the limited time allotted for IPLC statements, the IIFB needs assurance from parties, the co-chairs, the substa chair, the bureau, and others that our proposals as IPLCs will be included for consideration in contact group working documents or CRPs as appropriate. In addition to our statement on this item at the informal session, we recommend retention of previously adopted TK indicators to support monitoring of the contribution of IPLCs to the post-2020 GBF an IPLC-specific process to continue development of TK and IPLC-related indicators under the auspices of the 11th meeting of the 8J Working Group, in parallel with and in addition to the ATEG. In addition, the TOR of the ATEG must ensure the full and effective participation of IPLCs. The TK land tenure indicator adopted in COP decision 10 stroke 43 on trends in land use change and land tenure in the traditional territories of IPLCs closely corresponds to SDG indicator 1.4.2. We believe that this indicator fulfills the criteria for headline indicators related to proposed targets 1, 2, 8, and 20. The document should recognize and welcome LBO2 alongside GBO5 as scientific basis for developing the post-2020 GBF. Mr. Chair, GBO5, LBO2, the IPES Global Assessment, and many other scientific and technical studies confirm that empowering the environmental stewardship, co-management, values and relationships of IPLCs, and the right to self-determination and governance of indigenous peoples is critical to conserving biodiversity, supporting sustainable use, and enabling ABS uh, across our planet. We regret that these studies are not adequately reflected in the Add To document. We provide a list of references in our written submission, which we hope that the contact group can take into consideration. There needs to be a global common understanding in the post-2020 GBF about what is required for, for biodiversity and natural resources to be managed effectively and equitably. All of the goals and targets of the GBF must be in line with this goal. Unfortunately, concerns and abuses continue to be documented and reported by, inter alia, the UN Special Rapporteur on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. It will be more critical than ever to consider rights-based approaches if a target to protect 30% of the planet is adopted, given that such areas will clearly include areas now owned, governed, or managed by IPLCs. The IIFB looks forward to providing specific inputs during the contact group discussions. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much on behalf of IPLCs. Now on behalf of youth, Keletso Malepe of GYBN, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We take this instance to reinforce that all statements made on behalf of the Global Youth Biodiversity Network at the informal session remain valid, and we re request that they be taken on board in the development of CRPs. To add to our previous st statements regarding this agenda item, we make the following points. Firstly, the framework's proposed goals and targets, as well as the documents under this item, 
fail in their current form to mainstream human rights as a cross-cutting issue. Positive synergies between human rights and biodiversity outcomes are supported by abundant scientific and technical literature, including the IPERS Global Assessments, LBO2, report from OHCHR, and many others. A glaring omission is the lack of reference to, to securing indigenous and community tenor rights and governance systems to targets one and two. Secondly, the framework, as well as the documents 3 slash add point two, fails to sufficiently recognize the broad international consensus identifying education as a key enabler for change towards sustainability and as a leverage point for transformative change as identified by IPERS. The role of formal, non-formal, and informal education goes beyond knowledge availability. Education facilitates connectedness to nature, behavior change, and rela relational values, and is key to addressing the root causes of unsustainable consumption and production. Thirdly, we believe that there is an imbalance with the way the three of CBD objectives are treated in the draft, with weak and insufficient language to address sustainable use and access and benefit sharing. The current targets on sustainable use, production, and consumption are insufficient, with little focus on productive sectors and only getting consumers to reflect on their behavior over the need for structure, structural changes. Fourthly, if the term nature-based solution is used in the framework, it should be after defining the concept in the CBD and having appropriate biodiversity and social safeguards ag agreed by parties and re relevant stakeholders. Several assessments shows that this concept has been sadly misused for offsetting and monoculture schemes. There's the need for strong scientific guidance and safeguards in the context of the CBD. Until this, we recommend using the term ecosystem approach and its principles as defined in the CBD. Fifthly, as the comment, as the document three slash add point two rightly points out, net gain or no net loss approaches, if not qualified, carry high risk of harmful outcomes. We believe that a net gain or no net loss approach should not be used in the post-2020 frame, framework without safeguards to ensure that this is not used to justify further loss of critical ecosystem and their functions. Sixthly, and, impo and importantly, we point out that the current draft in many ways is a step back from a number of IG targets from many CBD decisions, as well as international law more broadly. We must not accept any regression, and we must recognize the need for drastic improvement to the current draft. Finally, at this point, we would like to ask for party support to, for the following text proposals to Annex 2 of Document Substance slash 24 slash 3. In paragraph 3, to add representation from major stakeholders and rights holder groups after the words geographical representations. In paragraph 6, to add youth, indigenous people, and local communities, women, after the words from government. And in paragraph 1, bracket C, to add com community based monitoring and information systems after the words citizen science. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. On behalf of youth, now we we'll give the floor on behalf of NGOs to CBD Alliance. So, Gadir Labadens, you have the floor. Thank you. Buenos dias, señor presidente. Saludos a todas, a todos, a todes. Good morning and welcome to everyone. The CBD Alliance that gathers a diverse range of views and opinions. Let me start by reiterating our concern on the process to discuss monitoring elements around targets and goals that have not been agreed yet and are not under discussion despite the mandate from Open Ended Working Group 2. Secondly, we want to alert about the lack of implementation of the obligations under the CBD, the lack of ambition and even regression in the updates, updated zero draft. For example, in the current GBF draft, there is no more mention of halting the loss of interact, intact ecosystems and especially primary forests, nor does it strengthen and build on like in AG Target 5 and SDG 15.2. Action Target 1 only refers to putting 50% of area under some kind of spatial planning and restoring degraded ecosystems and without addressing the key aspect of governance and use of areas. 
IT target 3 is weakened in action target 17 by suggesting that only the most harmful perverse incentives should be phased out in the short term and contains no reference to the role of public and private investments in supporting biodiversity harmful projects. States' obligations to regulate consumption patterns have been reduced to a vague reference to consumer choices, ignoring the overarching role of governments in putting in place a regulatory framework that avoids harmful production and thus consumption. Target 4 is also a significant regression on SDG Goal 15.5, which commits to halt the loss of biodiversity by 2030 and by 2020 protect and prevent the extinction of threatened species. Target 9 talks about increasing productivity in agricultural ecosystems, while IT Target 6 demands the sustainable management of all areas under agriculture, aquaculture and forestry, ensuring conservation of biodiversity. Third, the overexcitement around specific issues is alarming. A target of 30% to expand protected areas and OECMs without any conditions to ensure equitable governance of these areas and no mention of ICCAs and a focus on language like nature-based solutions that without a universally adopted definition is being used for carbon offsets and other activities that are very harmful for biodiversity and the communities that depend on it. As a minimum, all the elements contained in IG Target 11, including equity and FPIC, need to be put back in an, into an area-based target. On the other hand, the latest draft does not integrate a rights-based approach and does not include crucial aspects such as the human rights, role, participation, needs and aspirations of rights holder groups like indigenous peoples, women, local communities, peasants and youth, except for a very vague reference that provide no guarantee that human rights violations, like forced resettlement in the name of conservation, will be halted. There is a general lack of balance between the three objectives of the CBD in all decisions and the targets and indicators proposed, added to a major omission around DSI. We reiterate our concern about working on indicators before the goals and targets have been agreed. Our inputs here do not constitute acceptance of the updated zero draft. Indicators presented so far are too quantitative and are not based on decisions on targets and goals. The idea of gross ecosystem product, for example, for example, reduces biodiversity to a market commodity. Indicator 1402 on corporate sustainability reporting is completely inadequate as is a biomass material footprint per capita. And in 1502, we urgently need national and international regulation and the ratification of inequalities. Rectification of inequalities, sorry. We continue to believe that formal virtual negotiations disadvantage most developing countries and civil society, particularly LPLCs, for small farmers, women and youth, adding to inequities in multilateral negotiations and other global injustices. However, we participate in good faith in order to amplify the voices of the disadvantaged. Muchas gracias, señor presidente. Thank you very much, Chair. Yes, Gadir, and gracias. Thank you, Gadir, and thank you for your good will to participate in the debates of the convention. I'll be taking into account also to co-chairs of the Open Energy Working Group on most 2020. As I'd like to remind you that Substat do not have a mandate to negotiate goals and targets, but all this information, all these points are very well taken and will be uh, a use to advise uh, co-chairs on the, on the next uh, draft one of post-2020 framework to be negotiated later. Now, on behalf of subnational governments, um, Raquel Levesque, the advisory committee of subnational governments, please raise your hand and you have the floor. For subnational governments, Rachel Levesque. Okay. Mr. President. Thank you, Chair. It is a pleasure to represent the Committee of uh, Regions for Sustainable Government, which is called Regions 4, and the Government of Quebec, ECLE, Local Governments for Sustainability. Although it would have been our pleasure to welcome you in the beautiful province of Quebec, we are thankful to be able to resume the negotiations on this urgent agenda. We hope that this virtual format will allow an equitable space for all stakeholders' voices. As for the special focus that we have been asked to put on document 
24 slash 1 slash add 2 for this session. Even though we had very limited time to review and analyze the new revised document, we wanted to welcome some of the mentions of local and subnational governments throughout the scientific and technical background supporting the goals and targets of the GBF. This is a, of, a speci of special importance. Uh, <laughs> The importance of having an active implementation at all levels. That being said, our con constituencies strongly believe that we should more explicitly refer to the role of local and subnational governments throughout the P2020 GBF, and that we should make sure that indicators are reflected and applicable at all levels of government where required. We don't want to reiterate all the comments we made at the informal session early this year. Thus, we invite you to consult our previous statement, but we think it worth reiterating how important it is to us that the proposed monitoring approach allow us to track progress across all levels of government, including the subnational level. We thus propose to add the subnational level of governance when it comes to the headline component indicators, as we believe that the indicators should be applicable and used by subnational governments in their own reporting. We therefore ask to explicitly uh, make reference to the subnational level of governance when it comes to both headline and component indicators. Local and subnational government implication will be crucial if we want to build partnerships and drive the momentum for change aspired to by the GBF. We would also like to enhance the role of our constituency specifically in contributing to planning, monitoring progress against targets and reporting. If we are to get a true picture of transformative change on the ground, we need to aggregate action and solutions for all levels of government. This is something that must be emphasized in the P2020 GBF. We will submit our technical comments th throughout the contact groups and by writing. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much for being very concise and brief. Now, on behalf of Bonfi Foundation, Center of Biological Diversity, David Shepherd Wildlife Foundation, Defender of Wildlife, Environmental Investigation Agency, Foundation Franz Weber, International Fund for Animal Welfare, Pro Wildlife, Natural Resource Defense Council, the Wildlife Conservation Society, and the World Federation of Animals, Sue Lieberman from WCSC, please raise your hand and you have the floor, Sue. Uh, thank you very, thank you very much, Chair. Um, and in addition, we're, I'm speaking on behalf of these 11 international and national NGOs, and these comments are in addition to others that we've submitted in writing. Billions of wild animals and plants are traded annually to meet expanding global demand, but we are in a crisis of our own making. It best predicts that over a million species could go extinct. We are in an era of pandemics. That's why we're all here calling in from home. And without genuine proactive prevention, we will experience a COVID-like event every decade or even more frequently. As we trade species on an industrial scale, we threaten ecosystem integrity and risk more pandemics of zoonotic origin. Reigning in wildlife trade is critical for our health and the health of our planet. IPLCs with no other source of nutrition are especially at risk as commercial trade, particularly in live animals, undermines their food security and cultural identity. Target four on wildlife trade and consumption, however, reflects business as usual. It must match the level of threat we face and apply the precautionary principle. Add to Rev 1 promotes sustainable use in trade. International law already does this. But adding the word safe changes nothing and will not achieve the 2050 vision, especially as there's no definition of safety or unclear how to measure acceptable risk. To prevent the next pandemic of zoonotic origin, we urge parties to revise Target 4 and the associated indicators to end all commercial wildlife exploitation and trade unless it is demonstrably sustainable, legal, well-managed, and presents no risk to human or animal health and enhances IPLC livelihoods and food security. We must also monitor all wildlife trade, not only illegal or unsustainable trade, and evaluate legality, sustainability, and safety with separate indicators. Trade could be legal but not sustainable, or sustainable and legal but still risk zoonotic spillover. 
pathogens do not care whether an animal was obtained legally or illegally from the wild or from a breeding facility. Our organizations, therefore, welcome the opportunity to join the contact group on this agenda item and to support you, the parties, to develop and adopt the transformative change in ambition the natural world so desperately needs, and we all need to prevent the next pandemic. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you very much, Sue Lieberman. And WCS is on, yes, on behalf of these 11 organizations. Uh, I remind you, other observers, to kindly upload your statements by close of business of today, Montreal time. Um, we already spent one hour. So we have now complete uh, the first reading of agenda item three, the post 2020 global biodiversity framework. We had a very rich discussion and good new points in addition to what we heard in February during the informal session. On many issues, there is a strong agreement. I propose the following way forward. On elements on this agenda item related to GBO5, following the comments received and the high level of convergence in views, I will prepare a conference room paper with the help of Secretariat. On elements on this agenda item, related to technical and scientific aspects on goals and targets of the post-2020 framework and suggest monitoring framework. Considering the complexity and the importance of these issues, the range of views, as well as the limit time during this plenary session for discussion, I propose to establish a contact group to help to develop a CRP and a chair's text on advice to be provided <clears throat> to co-chairs of post-2020 process from this meeting. The contact group will be chaired by Anne Teller of the European Union and Jorge Murillo from Colombia. The contact group will, met, will meet this week on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday from noon to 3 p.m. Montreal time. And on Saturday, from 7 to 10 a.m. Montreal time. The timing on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday will allow us to avoid overlap with the standing committee meeting of our sister convention, CITES. No other sessions or contact groups will be organized in parallel. The mandate of the contact group on item three is, on Wednesday and Thursday, the contact group will work on the scientific and technical review of goals and targets on the basis of document app to ref one, scientific and technical information to support the review of the proposed goals and targets in the update zero draft of post-2020 framework. On Friday and Saturday, the contact group will work on issues and recommendations related to the monitoring framework on the basis of document at one rep one. And a known paper will be developed for this purpose. The CRP for agenda item three will be considered on Wednesday, 26 May, during the sixth Substa plenary, and will be will be able in a, and will be available in all languages at least 48 hours before that plenary session. I would like to say a few words about the way that contact groups will operate during this Substa meeting. Please note that you will be able to connect to the contact group 60 minutes before start time. As per informal sessions in February, 
The secretary will provide technical training and testing 30 minutes before contact groups. Contact group sessions will last up to three hours. One or two sessions of different groups can be scheduled per day, but not run in parallel. They will meet either from 7 to 10 a.m. or from noon to 2 p.m. Montreal time. Contact groups are open to participation to all parties, other governments and observers. The usual practice and rules will apply to participation of observers. They may speak at the discretion of the co-chairs and given the floor after parties speak. Any substantive proposal from an observer must be supported by at least one party. That's the practice. As per usual practice, the sessions cannot be recorded or shared through social media. This is the way we also always work. Please note that contact groups are only accessible through the interaction system. We ask parties and organizations to limit themselves to one or two speakers, with the understanding that remaining members of the delegation can follow the discussions as viewers and that, and that they may exchange their speakers at any time. To maintain the integrity of the system, we ask, I'm sorry, no more than two participants from each party Non-party observers join as speakers, all others may join as viewers. The contact groups will work in English. Accordingly, non-papers considered at the meetings of the group will be in English. As per usual practice, the outcome of the work of the contact group, the chess reports and draft CRPs will be provided in all languages for consideration by the plenary. Well, we spent already one hour uh, of today in this point. Uh, dear colleagues, we will now complete the first reading of item six of Substa Provisional Agenda on marine and coastal biodiversity. Kindly recall that item six was considered during our informal session on 24th and 25th February. At that time, interventions were heard from 32 parties and regional groups and an additional four written submissions and also 14 observers with additional five written submissions. Before I open the floor for interventions, in order to increase efficiency, I will ask those parties, regional groups and observers that deliver a statement on this item and the informal session to request the floor only in the event that you wish to make a significant additional points to add to, uh, to your previous intervention at the informal session and to focus on the recommendations in document 24.6. In such cases, please mention those changes briefly and provide them in writing. For minor changes, you may simply resubmit your statement. In developing the CRP or non-paper for this agenda item, all the comments and suggestions made in your statements, whether in February or today, will be considered carefully. The statements by other governments, the stakeholder groups, other observers will be heard as time allows. As you know, we're quite behind from our schedule. If your intervention is related to more general marine issues that are relevant to post-2020 framework, rather than to recommendations in document six, you are invited to make these points in the contact group on item three, under the discussions of the Act two document. Let's maintain the mandates of all these documents were prepared as a response from decisions from the COP. But anything that has to do with post-2020 framework should be addressed during the contact groups on item three. 
Right? This is quite important to not to mix topics. I'll give the floor to Secretariat to introduce item six for completion of the first reading. Um, Secretariat, you have the floor. Secretariat. Hello, can you hear me, Chair? Okay, apologies. Thank you, Chair. On item six, the Secretariat has prepared document CBD slash substa slash 24 slash six on marine and coastal biodiversity. The subsidiary body will be considered to it will be invited to consider the draft recommendations in this document. In addition, the subsidiary body will have before it a number of information documents related to this agenda item, which you will see on the screen before you. Please note that at the informal session, the Secretariat received 55 written statements, including 36 from parties and regional groups and 19 from observers. All of these will be taken into account in addition to interventions made during this formal session in the preparation of the CRP or non-paper for this agenda item. Please also note that there is a presentation related to this item, which was also made available during the informal session in February. It remains available at the link shown on your screen. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Secretariat. Uh, now I open the floor for interventions on item six on marine and coastal biodiversity, specifically in EPSAS, starting with regional groups, followed by parties and then observers. Uh, time for a statement is limit. A club, as you know, is run, running, providing for you on the screen to help you to manage your time. But please, again, do not speed up so much so your reading can be uh, challenging for interpreters. Um, so I look for requests from the floor from regional statements. I see no regional statements. I see Belgium. Is Belgium speaking on behalf of EU? If it's not the case, I then open the floor for parties to take the floor. Let's start with Belgium followed by Portugal and Indonesia. Belgium, you have the floor. Thank you. Speaking just on behalf of uh, Belgium, thank you for giving me the, fo the floor. I refer to my previous statement uh, of February, uh, the informal substat. Um, as part of the states known as the blue leaders, we work tirelessly to keep the ocean at the forefront of the international agenda in these unprecedented times. Blue leaders support the protection of 30% of the ocean through a network of highly and fully protected areas and the finalization of the negotiations of the new BBNJ uh, treaty. In that capacity, we also aim at strengthening CBD's marine work, specifically on subset document that we are discussing now. We would like to underline our, our uh, continued commitment to the EPSA process. This commitment was actually also the reason why Belgium, together with the Secretariat and the government of Germany, organized a workshop which is at the basis of uh, some of the annexes in uh, this uh, document. We are of the opinion that COP15 should agree on the procedure described in the annexes. Uh, it is necessary uh, to keep the EPSA process scientifically sound, up to date, relevant, legitimate, we are generally content with the procedure described in the annexes and we will send some of the amendments that are aimed at providing some clarifications. There are two things we would like to stress regarding the proposed annexes. Firstly, we really do believe and think and want to underline that the distinction between on the one hand the EPSA repository and on the other hand the information sharing mechanism as incorporated in the current annexes is really the key to solving the issues that we did not manage to move uh, forward on at the previous COPs. We were faced with the situation 
where there was an equally valid claim or two equally valid claims were made. The valid claim that national sovereignty gives any state the right to describe EPSAs in their own jurisdiction as they please, and the valid claim that any internationally adopted decision can only be changed by another internationally adopted decision. In order to overcome that dichotomy, the procedure described in the annexes cleverly proposes two different paths, either through Substa and COP into the repository or directly from the state into the information sharing mechanism. The choice is up to the sovereign state, but going through Substa and COP is the fair entry ticket or price to pay to go uh, to have your information put into the repository. And for us, this is really the most critical way to reconcile the different equally valid objectives and claims that we support, um, in, and we support this way to move forward. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. And same in regards to the young CBD follower from last session. <laughs> Now we give the floor to Portugal, followed by Indonesia and France. Portugal, you have the floor. Can you hear me? Oh, yes. Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, Portugal uh, maintains what was mentioned in the informal self uh, statement on, uh, on February. Portugal would also like to reiterate that with regard to ecological and biological significant marine areas, Portugal supports splitting the present draft recommendation into two. One on EFSA's currently part A of the present draft recommendation, and the second on conservation of marine and coastal biodiversity currently part B other matters. Portugal supports identification of option for updating and improving description of ecological and biological significant marine areas and for describing new areas. To do so, we propose amending the, the paragraphs of the draft annexes to clarify the modification procedure and identification, identification process of EPSAs. Portugal also supports the principle of an expert advisory body group, which should be either the informal advisory group as outlined in the Annexes 3 of the decision 13-12 and 14-9 of the Conference of the Parties, but with the extended terms and amendment terms of reference or the relevant expert advisory body introduced in the annexes of the, the present draft recommendation. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Portugal. Now we give the floor to Indonesia. Follow by France. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And thank you for allowing Indonesia the time to convey this statement. Indonesia would like to highlight that on BBNG IGC3 meeting on August 19 to 30th, 2019, all delegates acknowledge that EBSAS have its own arrangement through a CBD document. Therefore, Indonesia deems necessary to acknowledge all inputs on EBSA from parties having large or significant oceanic territory. In that regard, Indonesia proposed the following adjustment. Annex 1, Para 1A. We propose adding the word organizations to become collaboration with relevant organizations, expert and knowledge holders. Considering many intergovernmental organizations have information on certain sites therefore relevant to be consulted with. Annex 2, Para 1A. Considering it only regulates the repository of adopted EPSA, we propose to change the word were considered by the subsidiary body into were adopted by the conference of the parties. Therefore, the new sentence becomes Descriptions of areas meeting the EPSA criteria that were adopted by the conference of the parties and so on. 
For Annex 3, Para 1C, we propose to indicate significant change because if the change is minor, modify EPSAS is not necessary. Thus, the next text becomes significant change in the ecological or biological futures of an EPSA. On Annex 4, to be consistent with Para 1B, the proponent for Para 1C should be added to be as follows. In areas straddling within and beyond national jurisdiction, both the states within those jurisdictions and any state and or competent intergovernmental organization, the proposed area is partially located. On Annex 6, Para 1E, we suggest its deletion since this reference from previous EBSA is obsolete. We also suggest the deletion of Annex 8, Para 1E, for same reasoning. On Annex 7, Para 1C, we suggest to delete if they wish at the end of the second sentence, since the proponent has to, pros to respond the comment on issue raised by other parties. Annex 8, Para 1B, we also suggest to delete if they wish in second sentence. Lastly, on Annex 10, Para 1A, Please conclude. Indonesia would like clarification whether it is possible to have more than one state over one jurisdiction. Indonesia will submit the complete input to the Secretariat. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Indonesia. I remind parties to keep on the time. And now I give the floor to France, followed by Brazil. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Chair. As a complement to France's intervention during the preparatory work on this agenda item last February, France would like to mention firstly, the important role of fundamental and applied research in all of the issues relating to marine and coastal biodiversity, and recalls that the United Nations have designated the years 2021 to 2030 as the decade of ocean science for sustainable development. Secondly, France is in favor of having the conclusions from scientific work related to marine and coastal biodiversity, including EPSAS, taken into account by the stakeholders in current and future work under the BBNJ process, which would continue after it comes into effect. Thirdly, France reiterates its wish to see an enhanced consideration particularly of the issue of deep seabed mining as a factor in the pollution and degradation of marine ecosystems. With respect to the first part of the recommendation regarding EBSAs, France supports the proposed modalities for the modification of the descriptions of ecologically or biologically significant marine areas and for the description of new EBSAs. However, France would like to point out that for areas straddling zones found within national jurisdiction and the high seas, description or modification of the description of EBSAs for the part that is located on the high seas should fall within the jurisdiction of all states and or competent intergovernmental organizations in collaboration with the state or states where the other part of the area is located. Regarding Part B, of the recommendation, which addresses other matters, France suggests that it be made into a full-fledged recommendation dedicated to the conservation of, my, of marine and coastal biodiversity. This would enable other subjects of concern to be addressed, including underwater noise, marine debris, particularly vulnerable ec ecosystems of great importance in the fight against climate change, biodiversity mainstreaming in fisheries, the biodiversity ocean climate nexus, deep seabed mining and cooperation with other relevant conventions. In this respect, France insists upon the need for the Secretariat to work with the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations in order to support efforts to mainstream biodiversity in fisheries, including the development of voluntary guidance on the identification and implementation of effective area-based conservation measures in fisheries. Thank you, Chair. Merci, La France. 
Now we'll give the floor to Brazil. Brazil tiene la palabra. Thank you. Have the floor, Brazil. It's a pleasure to take part in this formal session. In line with our previous statement presented during the formal session, Brazil would like to draw attention to Annex 1 to 14 on the options for modifying and describing abscess. Brazil takes note with concern that during the last meeting of the export workshop in February 2020, there is not sufficient time to discuss the proposed modalities as recognized in the expert workshops report. Therefore, we believe the annexes still require for the improvements. In the case of Annex 9, about abscess straddling areas within and beyond national jurisdiction, Brazil has consistently argued that procedures for modifying the portion beyond national jurisdiction of an ABSA cannot be the same as those for the portion within national jurisdiction. Brazil would also like to request the Secretariat for the clarification on the mandate of the relevant expert advisory body proposed in paragraph 3 of the draft recommendation. It is of utmost importance to understand the conditions under which the Secretariat may seek the advice of the expert body. In addition, Brazil believes that more clarity is needed regarding the scope of the tasks and responsibilities of the advisory body, which must be clearly linked to the modalities for modifying and describing abscess. The structure of the advisory body should be inclusive and flexible in order to enable, on a case-by-case -case basis, the participation of experts from the specific region where an abscess is located. Furthermore, Brazil believes that the recommendation on Agenda Item 6 must recognize the sovereign rights of parties in accordance with the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Seas. On a similar note, the recommendation must take into account the outcomes of the BBNJ Intergovernmental Conference, which has been mandated by Resolution 72-249 to address on the UNCLUS the conservation and sustainable use of marine biodiversity in areas beyond national jurisdiction. In this regard, we must avoid duplication of efforts and make sure that our discussions are fully consistent with the outcomes of the BBNJ process. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. I was uh, disconnected very briefly, but I'm back. Thank you, Brazil. Uh, colleagues, we now will take uh, this uh, 15 uh, minutes uh, break. I think we are making very good progress And we will continue, and I will mention the next three speakers, Maldives, followed by Chile and Colombia, for you to be ready. And uh, now let's take uh, this uh, 15 minutes break to continue with our deliberations. See you in 15 minutes. Thank you. <music>
Yes. <laughs> Welcome back. Let's continue with our list as I indicate. We have Maldives followed by Chile and Colombia. So Maldives, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Modus would like to highlight the importance of knowledge, information and technology transfer, as well as the importance of capacity building in the context of EPSOS, especially for the small island developing states who are custodians to and neighbors of huge oceans. Under the Sustainable Ocean Initiative, the Maldives has benefited from a capacity building workshop focused on the national process for description of EPSOS and marine spatial planning. We therefore stress on the need for such capacity building initiatives, and we thank everyone who are involved in ensuring this. EPSOS provide opportunity for island biodiversity, including the marine and coastal ecosystems to be recognized globally as significant areas. As we stress the need for the development of a strategic review and analysis of the program of work on island biodiversity in the context of the implementation of the post-2020 global biodiversity framework. As an island nation, we face global challenges that are exacerbated at a local island setting. Therefore, we are at an imperative need for effective global efforts on conservation and management of island biodiversity. Modis also recognizes the ongoing BBNJ process and the role EPSOS may play both within and outside CBD, especially as a significant repository of scientific and technical information for future conservation efforts. EPSOS may play a significant role in achieving the targets of the post-2020 global biodiversity framework in the ocean. To conclude, Mr. Chair, if a contact group is established to discuss the annexes under this agenda item, we look forward to being part of the deliberation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Maldivas. Now I'll give the floor to Colombia, to Chile, followed by Colombia and Morocco. Chile tiene la palabra. Chile, you have the floor first. Thank you. Can you hear me? With this statement, Chile wishes to go into more depth on the comments that were made during previous informal sessions. In general, we support the content of the report on the progress for EBSAS as well as the scope of the proposed recommendations. Chile agrees with the document when it highlights the importance of defining this type of areas as complementary supporting tools to the management that's carried out by contracting parties for the conservation of biodiversity. Chair, conservation of the ocean is a priority for our country. That is why we have worked intensely over the last eight years to make progress both in designating and implementing protected marine areas. Chile is firmly committed with the target to protect 30% of the ocean by 2030. We think this is a fundamental to mention this in the 2020 uh, Global Diversity Framework. A little bit slower, please. So as I've said, we are firmly committed to the target to protect 30% of the ocean by 2030. We believe that this is a fundamental point to be made in the post-2020 framework. And we have mentioned this as members of the High Ambition Coalition for Nature and People, Global Ocean Alliance and Blue leaders. So it's vital to continue the work of identifying priority areas in the ocean in order to have scientific clarity about which are the relevant geographical zones that need to be globally protected. Recently, Chile has announced that it will start efforts to create a protected marine area in the high seas in the Nazca Ridge. And it's important to have as our basis the work that's been carried out to declare this area as an EBSA. We hope that this will serve as an example so that other states and international actors will be able to identify strategies to effectively protect those areas that together we have defined as priorities for the future of the world and our ecosystems. At the same time, Chair, there is an urgent need to implement actions that protect and improve ecosystem conditions based on scientific evidence and this 
points out that we have to move from merely voluntary commitments and frameworks towards clearly expressed ambitious actions when drafting the texts. In this respect, Chile wishes to express certain specific comments on the proposed recommendations in the document. And we will send these in writing because there's not enough time. Thank you. Thank you very much and well done on that initiative. Now, Colombia and then Morocco and then Samoa. Colombia tiene la palabra. You have the floor, Colombia. You hear me, Mr. Chair? Adelante, Colombia. Yes, please go ahead, Colombia. Colombia reaffirms its commitment to the conservation and sustainable use of marine and coastal biodiversity. We consider crucial a stronger inclusion of marine issues in the GBF. Therefore, as a member of the HAC, Colombia fully supports the proposal to protect at least 30% of the planet's oceans, including through protected areas and other effective conservation measures. Regarding the document CBD Substa 24-6, Colombia believes that we should continue identifying EPSAs as a technical and scientific exercise in line with the work of the informal advisory group. However, we can see it inconvenient in this negotiation to include the recommendation in Annex 3, paragraph 1E, on the modification to the IPSA. revising the already described IPSAs. We want to express our deep concern about the recommendations of the document. They are unfortunately limited to give a mandate to the group on IPSAs. Colombia, as the world's most mega diverse country per square kilometer with vast marine biodiversity and presence in two oceans, urged the parties to claim and place at the highest level of priority the value, the key role of the oceans, and their extraordinary potential, potential to address the triple planetary crisis we're facing. Substa should not only focus on the modification on EPSA's descriptions, but it also should provide advice to the parties on the relevant elements for the marine and coastal biodiversity in the GBF, according to the pri priorities identified at the thematic workshop held in 2019 as an input to the, no to the Open Ended Working Group 3 and COP15. Mr. President, if we leave marine issues only for information, we're failing in the urgency of taking concrete action to conserve, protect, and sustainable use our oceans. We agree with the need to take up previous COP decisions, such as decision 1029, to deepen the understanding of the contribution of the oceans to climate change mitigation and adaptation as a nature-based solution to address this and other societal challenges. We welcome the work of the Sustainable Ocean Initiative and call for the coordination with other international related processes, such as the re regular process for global reporting and assessment of the state of the marine environment, the decade for, of ocean science for sustainable development, and the decade for ecosystem restoration. Colombia recalls that the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea is not the only legal instrument governing all the legal activities in the oceans. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Muchas gracias, Colombia. Y le recuerdo a las... Thank you, Colombia. And I'd like to recall to parties that this document is limited to discussions on the document related to EBSAs. And marine biodiversity is such an important point when related uh, to the post-2020 framework and all those important comments should be related to item three. So now I'm going to give the floor to Morocco, followed by Samoa and then Bangladesh. Morocco, please. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Chair. Morocco 
believes that as the concept of EPSAs is new, it is clear that there are criteria that have not been taken into account at the first stage of identification and description of some of these areas, and that some of them have not been plainly and simply identified at this first stage. This fully justifies the call made in the proposed decision concerning the modalities for the modification of the descriptions of EPSAs and the description of new EPSAs. In addition, there is reason to encourage a deeper collaboration between the Secretariat and the organizations involved in order to facilitate the identification identification of areas meeting EPSA criteria. For these reasons, we believe it important to extend the mandate of the informal advisory group on EPSAs in order to enable modification of EPSA description and also identification and description of new EPSAs. Mr. Chair, regarding marine debris, litter and microplastics in the marine environment, the scope and extent of the problem requires significant effort from the international community to mitigate the damaging impact of this affliction. The same applies to underwater noise of anthropogenic origin and marine spatial planning, with respect to which the Executive Secretary is actively invited to continue the work on compiling and consolidating information on these issues. This agenda item six covers several issues addressed in numerous goals and targets in the post-2020 global biodiversity framework. In this respect, Morocco emphasizes the importance of target one of the global framework on land use. It provides a valuable basis for other actions, particularly marine spatial planning. Nonetheless, regarding target two on progress in protected area coverage, particularly marine protected areas, we wish to draw attention to the need to have not only an indicator for the level of global spatial coverage, but also to have indicators for surveillance and monitoring of species abundance in protected areas. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Merci beaucoup, le Maroc. Thank you, Morocco. I give the floor to Samoa. Samoa, you have the floor. Followed by Bangladesh and Sweden. Um, Seems Samoa disappears. Let's try Samoa once. If not, meanwhile, I give the floor to Bangladesh. Bangladesh, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Chair. First of all, Bangladesh appreciates the informal advisory group on IPSA and open ended working group on post 2020. Global Biodiversity Framework and the CBD Secretariat considering ecologically and biologically significant marine areas. Bangladesh belongs to the Bay of Bengal large marine coastal ecosystems with a broad sea scape endowed with coral associated ecosystem. Our coastal and marine ecosystems are under tremendous pressure of climate and human induced vulnerabilities. Considering the nature of marine ecosystem within and beyond national jurisdiction, we would like to stress on regional harmonization of policies as well as knowledge and information sharing opportunities that will be very important towards ensuring conservation and sustainable use in such areas. My delegation stresses on capacity building in the developing countries in terms of utilization of modern technology for coastal and marine spatial planning 
habitat mapping, monitoring of marine litter and marine debris, and conservation management towards restoration and conservation of coastal and marine ecosystems within and beyond national jurisdiction. With that note, thank you, Chair. Thank you all. Thank you very much, Bangladesh, for being very succinct. Let's try again with Samoa, followed by Sweden and Spain. Samoa, you have the floor. Meanwhile, let's continue with Sweden, followed by Spain. Thank you, Mr. Chair. In, in addition to still valid points raised during the informal SOPSDA meeting, Sweden would like to make some additional points. Regarding SOPSDA document 24-6, Sweden supports splitting the present draft into two separate recommendations, one on EBSAS, currently Part A, and a second on conservation of marine and coastal biodiversity, currently part B, other matters. We find it important to highlight both topics and stress the importance of issues related to the conservation of marine and coastal biodiversity. Sweden welcomes the report of the thematic workshop of marine and coastal biodiversity for the post-2020 global biodiversity framework, which provides a comprehensive and sound basis for strengthening considerations of marine issues in the GBF and updating the existing program of work for marine and coastal biodiversity to support the implementation of the GBF. In this context, Sweden would like to highlight the importance of area-based management tools, including MPAs and OECMs, to conserve and restore marine biodiversity and increase resilience to climate change. The science is clear that we need to protect at least 30% of the world's oceans to preserve marine and coastal biodiversity and ecosystem services, and that quality aspects of the protection, including ecological representativity, connectedness, and effective and equitable management are as important as the coverage. We also would like to emphasize the need to continue the work of developing and applying ecosystem-based management of marine resources, including an ecosystem approach to fisheries. Regarding the EPSA process and the proposed procedure described in the annexes, we support the intervention by Belgium and believe that a more flexible process with two endpoints, the EPSA repository and the information sharing mechanism, is a constructive solution. We are content with the role of the relevant expert advisory group and support the proposal of extending the term and updating the terms of reference of the informal advisory group on EPSAS. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Sweden. Now, I give the word to Spain, followed by Malaysia. Now it's Spain, followed by Malaysia, please. Dear Chair, Spain reiterates the comments that it made at the informal sessions of SUBSTA. We also want to express our support for the proposals that have been put forward by certain parties in these informal sessions about the uh, suggestion to have, in fact, two separate draft recommendations. There'd be one recommendation that would specifically focus on the conservation of marine and coastal biodiversity and we will send in comments in writing with specific amendments on this point. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you very much. Argentina. Malaysia, you can speak now. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Please go ahead. Uh, distinguished delegates, Malaysia would like to make a short intervention on this agenda. The ASEAN Pacific region, of which we are part of, is known to have the world's highest marine biodiversity. Therefore, Malaysia supports the endorsement of Annexes 1 to Annexes 14, addressing modalities 
for modifying descriptions of episodes and for describing new areas. Malaysia also supports the extension of the term of the informal advisory group on EPSAS as more work needs to be done to complete the guidance document. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Malaysia. Now I'll give the floor to Argentina, followed by South Africa. Muchas gracias, señor presidente. Thank you very much, Chair. Our delegation reiterates the comments made back in February and thank you for the opportunity for making certain additional comments on this point on our agenda. On document 24 slash 6, we take note of the progress report on the EBSAs and other matters. And under your leadership, we will be very brief. We've got two comments that are very important for our delegation. First of all, on the proposed draft decisions contained therein, we wish to highlight two aspects that our delegation considers to be of utmost importance. First of all, priority should be given to the fact that in the text there should be a reference to the UN Convention on the Law of the Seas, given that all of the COP decisions related to EPSAs with all of them, it's UNCLOS that provides the regulatory framework that regulates all the oceans and seas activities, including protection of the marine environment, whereas the CBD is restricted to making a scientific contribution through the EBSA descriptions, but does not have a mandate to regulate the management and conservation of waters beyond national jurisdictions, as we already pointed out at the workshop in Brussels in agreement with other delegations. Now, the second point. We need to include a reference to a safeguard regarding sovereignty uh, disputes in the text of the decision. And we will send in suggested modifications in writing to the aforementioned draft decisions. And we'll also propose some drafting adjustments in paragraphs five and eight on other matters. And we agree with what Brazil has said, namely we need to recognise the sovereignty uh, rights of these uh, coastal states and Argentina will continue to have a constructive approach in the negotiations to seek consensus between the participating delegations. Thank you very much. Thank you, Argentina. Here followed by China and the UK. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. South Africa thanks the Secretariat for the preparation of document CBD SABSTA 24-6 on marine and coastal biodiversity and has reviewed the progress that has been presented on ecologically or biologically significant marine areas or EPSAs, as well as on other matters. We welcome the modalities for the modification of the descriptions of EPSAs and for the description of new EPSAs as containing, contained in annexes 1 to 14 to the document. If endorsed, these provide formal mechanisms for updating EPSA descriptions contained in the repository and for registering new EPSAs. Regarding modifications to EPSAs for reasons A to E as listed under Annex 3, it must be noted that in a very limited number of cases, re-evaluation of an existing EPSA may result in an area no longer meeting any of the EPSA criteria. Therefore, modification should explicitly include possible removal of an EPSA from the list of existing EPSAs in the repository if it is clearly demonstrated that it no longer meets the EPSA criteria based on revised biodiversity information or errors in initial identification. This would be conducive to iterative flexible planning processes that respond to the best available scientific knowledge. Regarding recommendation four under ecologically or biologically significant marine areas for the developing of voluntary guidelines on peer review processes for the identification of areas meeting the EPSA criteria, we suggest that it would be more correct and consistent if the word identification is replaced with description and we would also like to suggest that the information sharing mechanism as referred to in Annex 2 could contain information on the experiences of states or organizations in the assimilation of EPSAs in policy and management processes, such as marine spatial planning, marine protected area expansion, or other processes. 
Um, this adds to our previous comments made in February. The above comments and editor are provided in writing to the Secretariat. Thank you. Thank you, South Africa. We'll ask again Samoa to raise your hand so you can take the floor. Seems now connection should be better, hopefully. Samoa? If it's not the case, let's continue with China followed by the UK. China, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We're very glad that under your leadership, SABSTA have made great progress. In our February meeting, China elaborated on the relationship between CBD, especially EPSA's description and related work under CBD framework with the UN law of the sea, UNCLOS. We would like to further elaborate on our views. The international laws, including UNCLOS, provide a legal framework for conducting maritime activities. EPSA is, is designed to be a scientific and technical method that shall not undermine the rights of the states. SATA and COP are supposed to reject the proposals involved involving disputed areas. Proposals as such, which have been deposited, shall be withdrawn. We noted that in February, in December 2017, UN General Assembly adopted Resolution 72-249. Uh, it, uh, it is about the legally binding instrument on the conservation and sustainable use of maritime biological diversity. In February this year, UN Division for Ocean Affairs and the Law of the Sea, responsible for BBNJ negotiations authorized by the UN, expressed its concern on the application of EPSAS refer to UN General Assembly Resolution 75-239. Currently, the International Maritime Organization, the Regional Fishery Management Organization, and the International Seabed Authority, they are the international organizations responsible for high seas, shipping, fishing, and mining activities in those areas have established specialized scientific and technological bodies for describing and designating maritime areas in need of conservation. It is also noted that in previous discussions, some states stress that the convention a CBD does not apply to the areas beyond national jurisdiction to avoid duplication of the relevant uh, scientific and technical work, we pro propose that SAFTA shall further discuss the work of describing EPSAS in compliance with the scope of the application of the CBD. Mr. Chair, China will actively engage in the consultation in this regard. Thank you. Thank you, China. Now I give the floor to the UK, followed by Korea. Thank you, Chair. Scientific evidence shows we need to take strong action to ensure the whole ocean is sustainably managed to reduce biodiversity loss. The recently published second UN World Ocean Assessment shows us that the benefits provided by our ocean are being increasingly undermined by climate change and unsustainable human activity including overfishing. As chair of the Global Ocean Alliance, the UK remains committed to ensuring that the post-2020 global biodiversity framework reflects the importance of the ocean. We welcome the revised Addendum 2 paper, 
which highlights the scientific evidence for a target to protect at least 30% of the ocean in marine protected areas and other effective area-based conservation measures by 2030, and the importance of making sure protected area management is effective. That is why the UK is leading the Global Ocean Alliance of countries supporting a 30 by 30 ocean protection target and is ocean co-chair of the High Ambition Coalition for Nature and People. We would like to thank all parties who recognise the importance of the 30 by 30 global target with the full and effective participation of IPLCs. As highlighted in our national statement on item three, we note there are still some gaps in the revised Addendum 2 paper regarding the marine environment, fisheries and vulnerable ecosystems. On EBSAs, the UK supports the information provided by ecologically and biologically significant areas process, which will be particularly helpful in the BBNJ process. The annexes to document 24 slash 6 provide helpful clarification regarding the different processes for modification of EBSA descriptions within and beyond national jurisdictions. The UK agrees with the interventions made by Peru and other parties that for descriptions inside national jurisdiction, the process should respect sovereign rights and jurisdiction. As such, we believe the COPS role should be limited to that of being informed of such descriptions. We would therefore like to seek clarity on the wording for consideration with a view to inclusion in Annex 6 1D and Annex 8 1D in the document. Our understanding is that this equates to an information sharing procedure rather than a decision making process, but we welcome the views of other parties. We would also welcome further clarification on the distinction between the information sharing mechanism and the repository as outlined by Belgium. We have submitted this statement in writing. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, UK. Now I'll give the floor to Korea, followed by Iran and Denmark. Korea, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. First of all, the Republic of Korea welcomes and appreciates the continuous work done by the Secretariat to implement Sustainable Ocean Initiative, SOI, in line with the Secretariat's work, Korea will continue to support and participate in implementing SOI for our sustainable ocean. Since the inception of SOI, Korea has been one of the dedicated members. The Ministry of Ocean and Fisheries of Korea has fully supported SOI Global Dialogue, Training of Trainers Workshop, Capacity Building National Workshop. As a result, Korea had the special honor to host two Sustainable Ocean Initiative Global Dialogue held in Seoul, Korea in 2016 and in 2018, respectively. The Seoul outcome was adopted in 2016 and SOI Global Dialogue became the biannual forum where regional seas organizations, regional forestry bodies and other experts exchange and share ideas for sustainable ocean. The COVID-19 has delayed this, the third SOI Global Dialogue originally scheduled in Busan, Korea 2020 last year. However, Korea will provide our utmost support to the Secretariat for the success of the third SOI Global Dialogue, which will contribute to the post-2020 GBF. In terms of EPSA, Korea would like to express sincere gratitude to the Secretariat for organizing the export workshop to identify options for modifying the description of ecologically or biologically significant marine areas and de describing new areas. Korea also would like to extend a special appreciation to the government of Belgium and Germany for supporting the workshop. Our gratitude also goes to the expert who participated in the workshop to improve the EPSA process. Since our suggestion of the paper review process at COP13, Korea has been committed to the discussion with the view to strengthening the scientific credibility and transparency of the process. Uh, 
Korea will ceaselessly contribute to the EPSA process on basis of scientific, transparent, and multilateral approaches. For more detailed options, we'd like to share them on Annex 1 to 14 in the forthcoming contact group. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Korea. Now I'll give the floor to Iran, followed by Denmark. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Can you hear me? Yes, please go ahead. Hello. Yeah. Uh, in general, we support the proposed document and request the uh, following adjustment. Uh, Iran also, uh, like the other party, fully aware of the importance of biodiversity in freshwater, marine and coastal zone, as well as the deep sea, the coral reefs, for food security, biodiversity, and sustainable use. One of the uh, key uh, components, Mr. Chairman, is the importance of the shared resources in the ecosystem, which need to be highlighted in this document. Because of the protection of all genetic resources, we need a, a joint collaboration between range state for joint management in fishery, prevention of invasive species, pollution, and microplastic reduction, and any other anthropogenic effect Therefore, in the text, beside national jurisdiction, we need uh, to add, uh, to include the shared water body and marine resources. Here again, we would like to highlight the involvement and participation of local community and indigenous people as a main driver for conservation of marine and coastal ecosystem. Public and private sector can be uh, supportive via various training program by technology transfer and financial support and resource mobilization. Finally, Mr. Chairman, we also propose the convention in the in issue related to marine and coastal biodiversity work in close uh, in close collaboration with FAO for better management and sustainable use for the benefit of conservation and aquatic genetic resources and biodiversity. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Iran. Now I give the floor to Denmark. <laughs> Denmark, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Please go ahead. Thank you, Chair. Uh, as a compliment to the statement from Denmark for February, we would like to uh, so, um, expand our views. Denmark supports the comments from Belgium, Portugal, France and Sweden. We are committed to reach an ambitious agreement on global marine diversity and support the identity option for updating and improving the description of EPSAS. We acknowledge the work of the Secretariat developing the CBD software slash four slash six on marine and coastal biodiversity. However, we, along with others, find marine and coastal issues of great importance and support that the draft recommendation are separated into two draft recommendations, one on uh, conservation of marine and coastal biodiversity and the other on ecological and biological system marine areas, EPSAS. In that regard, we stress the need for the conservation of marine diversity to be well reflected within the post-2020 global framework, including marine plastic litter, which we think will complement the ongoing work on the UNEA and the uh, decision hopefully being taken on UNEA 5 in February 2022. And the ocean climate nexus in support of the ongoing work on the, the UNFCCC on the dialogue on ocean and climate, as well as other emerging issues, including underwater noise and deep sea mining. For Denmark, nature-based solutions are a critical element in building the resilience of marine ecosystem and economies to respond to climate change. Focusing on the ocean climate nexus within target, the proposed target one, two, and seven is important for Denmark with ocean and coastal ecosystems serving as the planet's largest carbon sink. 
We support target two to protect at least 30% of the ocean and land by 2030 and have joined the global, the global Ocean Alliance High Ambition Coalition for Nature and People and the Blue Leaders to highlight the importance of marine protected areas. In that regard, we would like to underline the importance of the CBD decision 14 slash 8 on protected areas and OECMs. We are adamant that marine issues shall have a more prominent role in the post 2020 framework. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Denmark. Now I'll give the floor to Samoa. Let's try. I hope this time we can make it. Samoa, you have the floor. Seems still yeah, problems with connections. And I see Cameroon as also asking for the floor. Cameroon, you have the floor? Merci, merci, le Président. Thank you, Chair. Cameroon supports the statement of the African group from the last virtual session on marine and coastal biodiversity. The importance of the UN decade for ocean science is going to provide essential knowledge for the implementation and monitoring of the post-2020 global framework. Cameroon once again reiterates the importance of using the procedures of identification, description, and modification of marine protected areas and EBSAs on the basis of a an evidence, an evidentiary body. And this in order to protect marine biodiversity. The planning, spatial marine planning, is a process that is interactive and inclusive and will help in supporting the future protection of biodiversity and the fulfillment of the SDGs as well as the national uh, fight against, at the national level, the fight against climate change. Cameroon will pursue efforts to strengthen its own national capacity and improve significantly its planning of marine areas and also creating a tangible possibility for co collaboration with mainstream biodiversity in that sector. We will also develop and implement in a flexible fashion other effective area-based conservation measures as per the decision CBD slash eight. Uh, marine environments are very critical and very vulnerable. Cameroon therefore would like to put special emphasis upon the urgency of protecting marine biodiversity and to support the marine environment, this is important to reflect and to, and to take into account. Cooperation and collaboration are critical uh, for marine ecosystem protection. We would also like to highlight the importance of supporting the efforts to implement the voluntary uh, guidance for protecting diversity in cold water areas under the convention. Regarding the issue of ocean pollution with plastics, Cameroon would thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Cameroon. Give the last, last try with Samoa. So I, I see sometimes appear, sometimes disappears from my screen. Can Samoa take the floor, please? 
If it's not the case, we finish with requests from the floor, from parties. Um, we still have half an hour and we can try with um, to do our next agenda item. So I've been advised and my suggestion is to skip intervention from observers, but let me tell you that we have received statements from Bird Life, Farm, GYBN, GeoBone, IIFB, UNEP, UN, United Nations University, WCS, WECF, Women Engage for a Common Future, and Solidar. So, all these statements will be taken into account for our works on this agenda item, as well as all statements delivered today at Montreal Working Hours for consideration on these agenda items. Dear colleagues, and also I see FAO, uh, if they deliver your message, uh, your statements, that, that can be very useful. With this, we have completed the first reading of agenda item six of marine and coastal biodiversity. We have had a very rich discussion on many issues without major areas on convergence. However, we also have some divergent opinions that require further discussion. After hearing your interventions, I propose to establish a contact group to help to develop a CRP document. The contact group will meet on Monday and Tuesday 10 and 11 May for three hours each day from 7 to 10 a.m. Montreal time. The contact group will be co-chaired by Ms. Marie May Musungale from the Seychelles and Mr. Matthias Steitz from Germany. The contact group has the following mandate. Based on the interventions heard during this session, as well as during the sessions on the 24th and 25th February, the contact group will focus on annexes 6, 8, 11, and 13 of the draft recommendations. The CRP for agenda item 6 will be considered on Tuesday, 25th May, during the 5th substar plenary, and will be available in all languages 48 hours before that plenary session. We will recommend in plenary and uh, seven in Montreal well, to make uh, later. No, sorry, sorry about that. Since we were able to save time, uh, let's move to item eight on the program of work of IFBES. Um, this item was not discussed during a formal session in February due to the lack of time. Therefore, we will begin the first reading of this item today. Then I'll give the floor to the Secretariat to introduce the document on agenda item 8. Secretariat, you have the floor. Can you hear me? Thank you, Chair. Uh, to facilitate uh, the deliberations on item 8 on the program of work of the Intergovernmental Science Policy Platform on Biodiversity and Ecosystem Services, the Executive Secretary has prepared document CBB slash SOFSTA slash 24 slash 8. This document contains in section 5 a suggested recommendation for the consideration of this body. The following information document 
may also be relevant to the deliberations under this agenda item, CBD slash substa slash 24 slash inf slash 17. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Secretariat. Now I open the floor for interventions on item eight of IPES program of work, starting with the regional groups, followed by parties and observers. So please, regional groups, you can raise your hands. I see Serbia. Serbia, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Can you hear me? Yes, please go ahead. Uh, dear Chair, ladies and gentlemen, as Serbia joined IPBES in June 2020, allow me to address the SAPSTA on behalf of the CA region on this item. The CA region would like to thank Secretariat for preparing this document and related uh, info documents as well. The CA region wishes to emphasize its satisfaction with the complementary work of the CBD and Intergovernmental Platform for Biodiversity and Ecosystem Service. The IPBES platform helps CBD parties to accelerate the progress in monitoring the global biodiversity goals, but also other key international obligations stemming from the Sustainable Development Goals and the Paris Agreement on Climate Change. Even at this point, when discussions on priority goal for 2030 are underway, the complementary funding, global biodiversity assessment, and the global biodiversity outlook represent a set of basic information on the directions for the necessary transformative changes in society. In this regard, the C region supports suggested recommendations in general. But also, we would like to express here the need for better promotion of IPBES CBD complementary work in countries of the C region. We highlight the importance of cooperation among parties at the regional and sub-regional level. For example, the cooperation achieved under the Biodiversity Task Force of Southeastern Europe has enabled us to translate the Aichi biodiversity targets into coordinated policies and projects for assessing the benefits of ecosystem services, improving biodiversity monitoring and reporting and facilitating resource mobilization. We hope to continue such regional cooperation and expert and policy level in the implementation of the post-2020 global biodiversity framework. In our view, we consider it important that the CBD and IPBES secretariats further explore options for better engagement with the broad stakeholder group, including indigenous people and local communities, but also for better involvement of the wider scientific community in supporting decision makers at the national and regional level. In this regard, we would like to send the message through the conference of the parties of CBD and include the academic community in this text of suggested recommendation. We would like to provide the Secretariat with exact wording with the change in paragraph eight. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Serbia, on behalf of the Central and Eastern Europe region. I remind you, we are at the regional statements part, and I see Morocco and South Africa. Please let me know who will speak on behalf of your region. I see South Africa. South Africa, you have the floor. Thank you so much, Chair. Can you hear me? Yes, South Africa, for your regional statement. Go ahead. Um, thank you so much, Chair. Um, South Africa is speaking on behalf of the um, African group. Africa welcomes the progress made by the EBES in achieving the implementation of the work program. 
Africa also acknowledged the substantial contribution and benefits gained from the EPAS assessment to the work of the convention, particularly on the compilation of the GBO5 and in the development of the post-2020 global biodiversity framework. Africa calls for a robust capacity building to enhance the role of national focal points and other relevant officials in undertaking national and local assessments to feed into the regional and global assessment. This will assist in identifying gaps and strengthening regional assessment as well in directing the con conservation action accordingly in order to better achieve the 2050 vision of living in harmony in nature. It is also critical importance that the outcomes of the assessments need to be translated and better simplified to level um, my apology. It is also critical important that the outcomes of those assessments needs to be translated and further simplified to learn that are user friendly as noted in paragraph 24 of the cbd substa 24 8 document epes decision where we made reference to the epes decision of um seven stroke one paragraph eight um decided to reconsider at its ninth session of the plenary um, the request inputs and suggestions received in time for consideration at that session, including for a second global assessment of biodiversity and ecosystem services, and for an assessment on ecological connectivity. While the CBD Substar 24-8 document notes the reconsideration of an assessment on ecological connectivity, the actual proposed draft decision included in this document does omit any text in support of an assessment on connectivity and only focuses on the second global biodiversity assessment to be published in 2029. Africa suggests the following addition in the paragraph five of the draft recommend, um, reco recommendation to also include, uh, invites the platform to prepare an assessment on ecological connectivity and further invites the platform to prepare a second global assessment. Chair, Africa welcomes the scientific and technical cooperation between the EPAS and the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. in this connection with South Africa on behalf of the... It's with the thematic assessment on... We're experiencing some problems in connection with South Africa. Um, can we try to reconnect to finish? Um, entonces continuamos ahora para dar la palabra. So we will continue and we'll give the floor to the parties. Question for the floor. Let's start with Switzerland, followed by Mexico and Brazil. Yeah. Dear Chair, querido Ezekiel, Switzerland considers the establishment of IPES and its work to be of high importance for the international biodiversity agenda. CBD can take advantage of the scientific work done by IPES and its experts. The IPES report presents a sound scientific base for the discussions within CBD on how to best address the biodiversity crisis.
We are pleased that IPES has already adopted a number of assessment reports and methodological reports that fully meet the needs of the parties to the Convention. Switzerland also supports the ongoing work of IPES on the other important topics, such as biodiversity values, invasive alien species, nexuses, transformative change, or biodiversity uh, and business. Switzerland wishes to encourage IPES cooperation with IPCC and welcomes their co-sponsored expert workshop on the science of, of biodiversity and climate change in 2020. For the year to come, the parties to CBD should request IPES to provide scientific information relevant to the post-2020 global biodiversity framework, including in the context of its ongoing work program and its future global assessment. We also would welcome that SABSTA should have a standing agenda item to discuss the work of IPES. Switzerland considers that IPES could, as other partners such as IUCN are doing, provide necessarily methodologies under the Convention, develop indicators and baselines used for the monitoring, reporting and review mechanism by parties under the Convention, as well as methodologies for assessing the status and trends of biodiversity and ecosystem services as recommended actions to address drivers for biodiversity loss. Such an input could regularly inform progress made in implementing the post-2020 global biodiversity framework, in addition to the reporting by parties. We will submit these and additional proposed changes to the draft decisions in writing. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Gracias. Thank you very much, uh, Switzerland. Now I give the floor to my my list is moving. I think I said Brazil and Mexico followed by Japan. Brazil, you have the floor. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. Once again, it's a pleasure for me to take part in this formal session. Brazil commends the Convention for its continuing efforts to strengthen ties with IPBIS. Over the last decade, many are the examples of cross fertilization between the two fora, which allowed for a better, more efficient implementation of both. Figuring prominently among these are the assessment reports, perhaps the most high profile of the deliverables of the platform. Frequently, a request made to IPVIS by COP decisions, not only those reports provide CBD with state of art knowledge on the various aspects of biodiversity and ecosystem services but they also mobilize a great deal of attention from the media and policymakers for the eventual benefit of both the Convention and the platform. However, Brazil considers the fundamental as a synergy may be, it is of utmost importance that the scope of each forum remains preserved. This is not only for functional reasons, such as avoiding duplication of work. Respecting mandates is a matter of procedural fairness, whose ultimate justification lies at the crucial yet somewhat ungraspable issue of legitimacy. Although their subject matter is the same, CBD and APBIS are different enterprises. Each one has its own purpose, dynamic, and even membership. Brazil views with great concern any potential encro encroachment of one on the other. Regarding the suggested recommendation, we would like to comment on two specific paragraphs. The workshop on biodiversity and pandemics which took place last July and is referred to in paragraph three, must be taken for what it was, an opportunity for experts to extend views and opinions, not a pipeline to produce recommendations for the convention. The link between biodiversity loss and pandemics requires scientific assessment based on data, which is not the aim of the workshop. It will take a bit longer for such an assessment, which makes it premature to adopt the results of the event for consideration in the GBF. Furthermore, the very workshop report recalls that the workshop's recommendations have not been reviewed or endorsed by parties. In paragraph six, we believe it's inappropriate to put extra burden on the platform by inviting the platform to undertake new tasks related to providing support to help monitoring and reporting. IPVIS has already been required by the convention to produce in a few thematic assessments which are scheduled to be delivered between 2022 and 2023. It saw them more inadequate when we consider there is a proposal for an ATEC to carry out the monitoring of the GBF under discussion in item three. Brazil looks forward to cont contributing further on this topic. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. 
Thank you very much. Obrigado, Brasil. Now I give the floor to, doy la palabra a México, seguido de Japón. So, Mexico, and then Japan. Thank you, but first of all, Mexico. Thank you, Chair. The Mexican delegation recognizes the important work carried out by IPBIS and its contributions to support the taking of decisions related to biodiversity and ecosystem services, in particular through its global assessment. Its contributions have been of great relevance for biodiversity-related conventions, including the CBD. We welcome the flexible nature of the rolling work program up to 2030 because it will allow IPBIS to address emerging issues of high relevance as happened in July 2020 when in a response to the global COVID-19 pandemic there was a biodiversity pandemics workshop organized. We also support that within the framework of this work program, there should be a second global assessment carried out to support implementation of the post-2020 GBF and the 2050 uh, vision, basing ourselves on the results of the IPBIS thematic assessments and also the seventh national reports of the CBD, as well as national studies and assessments, so that we can have a smoother process when it comes to carrying out this global assessment. We hope that soon we will be able to have available the joint IPBIS IPCC report so that we can have technical and scientific elements that will contribute to addressing both of these issues from a more integrated perspective. The Mexican delegation recognizes the importance of technical and financial support for developing the national biodiversity and ecosystem assessments and thus we consider that this support should be extended to cover efforts that are undertaken to create and strengthen national biodiversity platforms. From the very outset with IPBES, Mexico has been an ally and has promoted the platform to support decision uh, makers and also the various multilateral environment agreements. Thus, we very much want to support the products that continue to be generated within, within the framework of IPBES and we'd like to reiterate our commitment to continue to collaborate on the various joint efforts undertaken between IPBES and the CBD. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mexico. Well, by Argentina. Japan, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair, for the opportunity to speak today. I would like to explain our view on the IPBES program of work. We welcome the document prepared by the Secretariat. Strong collaboration with the IPBES is important to review the effects of the implementation of the post-2020 GBF. It is also critical for achieving the 2050 vision, living in harmony with nature. Especially the second global assessment of biodiversity and ecosystem services will contribute to the review of the post-2020 GBF and also to the consideration of the future framework that takes over the post-2020 GBF. In this regard, we strongly support the proposed recommendation of the IPBES second global assessment. On the other hand, with regard to reviewing the implementation of goals and targets of the GBF, we need to increase work efficiency and avoid overlaps in work between IPBES and the CBD. Therefore, regarding the paragraph 5a, the responsibility of IPBES assessment and CBD's monitoring mechanism, including the global biodiversity outlook should be made clear so that we can easily see the difference in roles between the two bodies. In addition, regarding the monitoring and reporting in the paragraph 6, we would like to ask the Secretariat to provide detailed information before COP15 on the expected role of the IPBES. This is because some parties have conducted such monitoring and reporting, and also because some international organizations have been supporting such activities. And with regard to the technical expert group on indicators, which is proposed in the Substar Agenda Item 3, 
we need to make use of the existing frameworks with a technical expertise, such as the IPES. Therefore, we would like to invite IPES to consider possibility to play the role of the technical expert group and report to COP15 so that the parties can consider whether to establish the group under the CBD or the IPES. We will submit our comments and corresponding amend amendment of the proposed recommendations to the Secretariat later. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Japan. Now I give the floor to Argentina. Argentina tiene la palabra. Argentina, you have the floor. Chair, Argentina, thanks you with this possibility to participate on this very important agenda item on IPES work. And we have got some comments on document CBD Substa 24 slash 8. Firstly, we suggest that in paragraphs 3 and 4, COP should take note of the reports on biodiversity and climate change, as well as on biodiversity and pandemics, since that these reports, as has already been said, have not yet been considered by the IPBES member states. Turning now to the scoping process related to the nexus and transformative change assessments, we recommend that COP should take note of the progress made. And given that the eighth plenary will take place before COP, we should take note that this has started if that were to be the case. Turning now to the integrated approach between IPBES and the IPCC, we suggest that we should modify paragraph four to advocate for a consistent approach that avoids duplication of work and respects the specific mandates of both platforms. Finally, on paragraph five, we suggest that we should add recommendations on the drafting of the second global assessment. In particular, we believe that it's important to highlight the need to include the participation of public policy experts when developing the future global assessment and include examples of specific challenges for developing countries and for developed countries and to expand the analytical time uh, framework which in the Global Assessment 2019 started at 2010, so that now we can include studies that cover the loss of biodiversity that has been caused since colonization and the first industrial revolution. Dear delegates, in the last few years, IPES has made many uh, contributions, high profile contributions as regards biodiversity related scientific knowledge. We hope that these comments will be taken into account to increase the relevance of the IPES deliverables to the convention processes. Chair, we will send in comments in writing. Thank you very much, Chairman. Thank you, Argentina, and thank you for sending in, in writing these specific comments on the document. Dear uh, colleagues. To close, and let me tell you that there's sti the, still a list of country speakers. About, and I will read the list so we can continue doing next session on this agenda item. I have in the list Finland, followed by Cambodia, Belgium, Portugal, Colombia, Norway, Morocco, Canada, the EU, Spain, Germany, France, United Kingdom, Chile, mm. Bosnia and Herzegovina, China, Indonesia, Peru, South Africa, and Ethiopia. So I ask and Ecuador. So I ask the secretary to keep the list so we can recommend the uh, following interventions from parties. I also like to remind and thank for your cooperation. I think we gained time uh, uh, considering the progress when we just start this session that observers that were not able to take the floor to do 
to the time limitations, all of you can participate at the contact group on marine biodiversity. And please send your statements until the end of business time in Montreal for them to be considered. And my hope is that with all this information and with the co-chairs of the contact group, we can continue with the dialogues and the constructive uh, uh, works and, and uh, uh, to, in order to create good outcomes. I do thank you for your cooperation on this matter. I'm very much interested in a good participation of all, but you know, time limitations, time is, doesn't give, give us in a, any concession. And I also remind you uh, that please, if delegates to take a look on schedule tab mm -hmm. on the meeting page, which always show the most updated schedule for meetings of the plenary sessions and contact groups are the agenda items scheduled to be addressed. Um, all right, um, we have only two minutes more, so we will continue with the list. We will reconvene the plenary at 7 a.m. Montreal time on Sunday, May 23rd to continue with items eight and to take up items seven on agrobiodiversity and item 10 on invasive alien species. I'm not sure if Secretary has something less to say before adjourning. Uh, thank you, Chair. Just to remind uh, again all colleagues for the schedule for the rest of the week, that on Wednesday from noon to 3 p.m. Uh, Montreal time, we have first session of the contact group on item three, and similar on Thursday and Friday. And on Saturday, we have the meeting of contact group on item three from 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. Montreal time. And then Monday, the 10th, and Tuesday, the 11th, next week, we will dedicate to the contact group on item six, which will meet from 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. Montreal time. And we will not meet for the reminder of next week due to eat holiday. Following that, SBI will meeting during the week of May 16. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Secretariat. Uh, I think we made good progress these two days, yesterday and today, with this challenging uh, timetable we have. I do thank you very much for your cooperation and see you then next time on Sunday, 23rd. Then the meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much.